Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this webinar where we will present the instruction and we will solve the question regarding the questionnaire on EU One Health Surveillance Systems. This webinar is offered by Inetwild Consortium and aims members and observers of EFSA Animal Health and Welfare Network. Let me briefly introduce Inetwild Project which is a consortium running a project, a framework contract for EFSA. Under the One Health approach, we aim to compile valid information on abundance and distribution of wildlife diseases and hosts, following harmonized methods and filtered by the standards of quality. And secondly, we promote and coordinate the generation of new data. ESA contacted you in August 2022 in the context of the Commission mandate for scientific and technical assistance for a coordinated surveillance system under the One Health approach for cross-border pathogens that threaten the Union. The mandate requests EFSA to design the future European One Health surveillance system and the Commission will support countries by direct grants. One specific task is to perform a mapping of existing structured and systematic initiatives for surveillance in the EU for zoonosis in animals and the environment, on which the One Health surveillance system can be based. To address that task, EPSA has requested Inerwald Consortium as contractor to prepare a questionnaire for the collection of relevant information on such structures and systematic activities in the European Union, including non-football and non-antimicrobial resistance in domestic animals, wildlife and the environment. Members and observers of EFSA Animal Health and Welfare Network received a questionnaire file in Excel format and a document with instruction on how to complete it. EFSA focal points were also included in copy since you probably will need to collaborate with different colleges in your country. EFSA asked you to return the completed questionnaire by mid-September to the specific emails here indicated. Today, after this introduction, we are presenting the different parts of the questionnaire and next we will address your question and suggestions. It is important that when saving the file, please maintain the current correct extension. As set to edit the questionnaire file by clicking on the top button Enable Changes and Enable Macros. And please do not drag or move cells. Just fill in according to the instruction and give the format provided. When enable the macros, it is possible to get an error message like this. To solve it, close the questionnaire file, right click on it and select property and select unblock as shown in these figures. The questionnaire is divided into two parts, presented into two separate sheets. The first one, surveillance, explores the general organization of the surveillance system. The second one, pathogens, aims to identify target pathogens and species and methods for surveillance. Here you can see the different parts or sheets of the questionnaire including references to part 1 and 2 respectively, which detail different options and definitions. There are five types of answers, so cells can be filled with 1. a drop-down menu, 2. a multiple drop-down menu, 3. year format, 4. zero one answer, and finally free text. Please stick to the answer type to facilitate the analysis process. 
in case it's not possible to answer the question or the answer is unknown, please leave it empty. This will help the analysis process. We are solving questions at the end of these presentations, but if you have further questions after that about the questionnaire, please feel free to contact us at these emails. Thank you very much for your attention. Good morning to everybody, my name is Rakele and today I will present you how to download and fill in the questionnaire. So, first of all, download the attachment you received in the email by clicking on the button. Please make sure that when you download it, it has the correct extension. Then, we have to make sure that the macros are activated. So first of all, click with the right button on the icon of the questionnaire and click on property. Then, when the um, screen will open, just click on the tag for uh, the block on the security part and then OK. When you open up the questionnaire, you will have to enable the contact by clicking on the button in the opposite banner that will appear. The questionnaire is divided into two parts. In the first part, it is addressed the structure in general of the surveillance system, while in the second part, the pathogen targeted are addressed. For each part, you have the references in the other two Excel sheets. The general structure of the questionnaire has the block of questions detailed in the first line, while the question itself is present in the second line. In the third line, we provide some details, some explanation, and finally, which type of answer is required in the cell is expressed in line four. It can be free text, code, it can be a drop-down menu, it can be a code with either one for present and zero for absent. Please note that in any case, if you don't have the information or the information is not available, just leave the cell empty. And finally, there is a multiple choice drop-down menu where you can select more than one item in the menu. Hi everyone, my name is Katarina and I'll be going through the actual questionnaire itself, just giving some examples and show you how you can fill it up. So let's open up the questionnaire. So I'll be going through the first part, which is on surveillance, on the surveillance systems. And the questionnaire is divided into different blocks. Each one has its color. And the first block, it's for the contact details. And we will ask you to provide the full name of the country. In this case, for instance, Spain. Then the contact person that's filling up the questionnaire. Let's pretend it's me. As well as an email contact. Then next we have the institution and institutional role. We can put for instance Iraq and researcher. And here it's a code that would be the initials of the country, which means Spain, followed by a number. And we'd like you to give a number for each surveillance system. For instance, this would be one. And if I'm putting in on another one, it would be like this. Then, if there is a name for the surveillance system, please, this would be the place to write it. We can push, for instance, West Nile National Surveillance System. And then we go to the next block, which is on general information. If there is a link to the surveillance, it would be to paste it here. And the origin of funding. Here we have a drop down menu, which is just you need to click on this arrow. And we have different options. If it's an European Union funding, national funding, or private funding, if it's neither of these, or if maybe it fits on different categories, then we would choose other and specify in the notes what we mean, like it's national and European funding. Okay, and we move on to the next column, which is on the coordination of the surveillance system. So if there's multiple institutionals doing the um, surveillance, we'd like you to tell us if the coordination is done by m 
one institution, which would be mono, by multi institutions, or by none. In the next column, it would be to write the name of the institution that is that it is in charge. And next up, we have if the coordination includes an animal sector, then here we would put one if it is present or zero. And the same for the next columns, if it involves human health sector or the environmental sector. And then again, you have a place for notes in case you want to add any information. The next column is on the integration among sectors within the surveillance system. This would mean, for instance, if there is integration or collaboration during the planning phase among each two sectors, we would be it would be a one for present or a zero for absent. Then in the sampling phase, the testing and analysis of data that is, or the dissemination activities. And then we have a column here for you to tell us what are the favoring factors for this collaboration or the barriers to collaboration. And this is a multiple choice drop down menu, meaning you have an, again a an narrow and multiple choices. You can choose more than one here. And if you're not sure which any of this means, we have another sheet here for reference to part one. We just click on it and here you should have here favors favoring or barriers so economics it would mean the presence or lack of funding for collaboration facilities the presence or lack of tools if it is favoring then it would be the presence if it is a barrier it would be the um, lack of facilities and then again a place for notes the next block of questions is on the participating institutions and here it's quite simple, it's just if universities are participating within the surveillance system, then it would be a 1. If research institutions are participating, a 1. Official laboratories as well, hunting sector, agriculture sector, if they're not participating, then a 0. And so on for hospitals, environmental agencies, pharmaceutical companies, wildlife rescue centers, private veterinaries, citizen science. Sometimes we provide an explanation here. For instance, for citizen science, it would be amateurs and non-professionals which are in contact with wildlife or livestock, public health services, wildlife management, local institutions, and other. This would be to add any other institution that is not represented. For instance, if it's a, a surveillance system looking for pathogens in water, then the local, official, local water companies are participating too. And for the next block of questions, which is on the geographical and temporal coverage. Here, we'd like you to tell us the level of coverage of the surveillance with a drop-down menu that has three options, supranational, national, or subnational. And in the next block of columns, you could indicate us specifically which nation. For instance, it's a national one and it's for Spain. The year of establishment of the first surveillance efforts of the collaborative efforts, meaning the one health surveillance, let's say 2010 for instance, and the frequency here again, we have a drop down menu. If this surveillance system is ongoing and continuous, meaning that each year there is sampling, if it's cyclical, not every year, every two years for instance, or if it's already done. And then again, you have references to part one, you have it here in case you're not sure what they mean. Here we have a column for dishomogeneity. This would be for you to tell us if different territories differ in any aspects of the surveillance system. And it's a multiple choice drop down menu. You can choose several options. For instance, they differ in sampling method. In one territory, you do the sampling method. In the other, you give another one. And then again, you can come back to references to see what they mean. Sampling effort, it's a number of samples if from one territory to another, target species, time, pathogen, and so on. And last column of this block, it's the year of data digitalization. If it's not digitalized, you just write not digitalized. And again, a column for notes. As for the next column on objectives and purpose, here we have again a multiple choice drop down menu with several choices you can choose from, which is the objective of the surveillance system you have in practice, to estimate the magnitude of health problem, to monitor the support intervention. And if neither of these are according to what you want, then you write another, and you have again the column of notes. If there are 
any results available, published papers, reports, we would like you to paste your links here if possible. And we're coming down to the last column, which is on the evaluation of the surveillance system. This is for you to tell us if there is an evaluation process of the surveillance system. And if there is, then is it an internal evaluation, external, or if there is no evaluation? And then how often the system is evaluated? You can put in every three years, wherever it is. And if the results are used to update or improve the system itself, here it's one for present, zero for absence. If international standards are used for sampling and analysis, and if the data is sorry, and if the data is shared among institutions, and if it's clearly organized, and if the report is given to the stakeholders that are involved in direct sampling or disease detection. And last one, a column for notes, in case you want to add anything up. I think this is everything. If you have any doubts, you can place them at the end. Thank you. So, as I said before, in the second part, we address the target pathogens. In the first column, you have to repeat the code as you used in the first part, just to make the two of them relatable. So, in this case, it would be, for example, Then you can pick up the pathogen addressed in the multiple choice drop down menu. As it is a multiple choice, if more than one pathogen is addressed, you can select all of them, for example. If a pathogen is not present in the list, you can fill up in the free text column. Just to repeat, the list of the pathogens and the caused disease is presented in the references to part two. Then you can state if the surveillance is active, passive, or both by selecting them with a drop-down menu. Then the following part is about the sampling design. The surveillance could have a random sampling, stratified sample, or risk-based sampling. For the definition of the three of them, again, you can refer to the references to part two. In this case, you can put one for present, zero for absent, and leave empty if it is not reportable or the, inf or the information is not available. Then there is a part about the storage of samples, so you can state if the samples are stored or not, and there is some free text left for notes. Finally, there is a part about the species and domains. In this case, you can select from the drop-down menu if just the group of species is addressed, or if there is a numeric quantification of, of how many samples are collected, how many individuals are sampled per state during the year. If other categories of species are addressed, you can put in, in other, and you can even specify on the side which categories are addressed.